Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back with a video on frequency modulation and this video is going to be uh, how I can generate a frequency modulated signal using a function generator. At the same time, I would love to visualize this uh, signal onto my oscilloscope. This is what I want to, I want to see this signal on oscilloscope and I actually want to see the functionality of this signal. So for that reason, I have in a arbitrarily function generation generator. Uh, this function generator or any function generator now has a capability where you can generate AM and FM modulated signal. So in order for me to generate AM and FM modulated signal, so it has two ports as you can see channel 1 and channel 2. I have channel 1 which is connected to my oscilloscope right here to channel 1 and we're just going to check and see some of the parameters that I can change. So, so I'm using channel 1. In order for me to change frequency, I'm just going to simply click on my frequency. Let me just turn off the output. I'm going to click on my frequency and then I can change the frequency. Right now, I'm setting my frequency to be 100 kilohertz. All right, let's leave the amplitude as is, but you can, if you want to change the amplitude, just go here and change the amplitude to, let's say, 5 volts, peak to peak, and leave the offset and phase as is. So it's actually, and if you want to look at the shape, what type of a waveform that you're generating, what type of waveform you are generating. So this is either it could be sine, square, pulse, ramp, noise, and then you can select many different type of waveforms which are available. Now, uh, so that's good. Um, so now the next thing I want to do, I just want to hit output. And this would be coming out. As you can see, my channel one is on. And I can see this signal right here on my oscilloscope. So let's just quickly look at our display on our oscilloscope. Here we go. Here is my signal. If I'm looking at it, and just remove the cursor, and here's my signal. So let me just auto set this, and let's do a default just quickly so you can see the signal. So this is my signal that is clocking at about hundred. 100, uh, 100 kilohertz as you can clearly see from here right here so this is at about 100 kilohertz all right so far so good so this is somewhere around uh, exactly at 100 kilohertz so now the next thing i need to do is uh, how i can generate a signal which will help me uh, do fm modulation so the first thing that you need to do uh, there is an option which is available on your uh, on these arbitrarily function generators is mod go to mod turn on your mod uh, and then what type of modulation you want you want am fm F fsk pm some whatever you want so we're going to choose fm so we're going to choose fm and uh, for fm i'm going to choose a source first thing that you need to select is your internal so i'm going to choose a source to be an internal source which means I want my modulating source to be an internal source which is being generated by my arbitrarily function generator. So once I have chosen my external internal source, now I can change the parameter. So from, from my modulating signal, do I want this shape to be? So once I have chosen internal, go to mod FM, then I can select the shape. So I want the shape to be a sinusoidal shape. So that is good. Then go to mod again, FM. Then I have two other parameters. So I have chosen shape to be sine, source to be an internal source, which means this is going to be mod my modulating frequency, which is being generated by my function generator. So this is different. This yellow part is actually going to be a carrier signal, while this selecting an internal source is going to be a, another generator inside of this, which is generating UA FM frequency. Since I have my carrier frequency, which is being set to 100 kilohertz, I'm going to set my frequency deviation to be 10 kilohertz. How are you going to set it? Oh, sorry, your FM frequency, just simply go here, select this to be to 10 kilohertz. Why am I selecting it to 10 kilohertz in a form of 10 folds? Because when you're modulating signal, you want to make sure this is actually 10 fold modulated. So for example, if you have a carrier signal is 100K, uh, you want your modulating signal to be 10K. That's why it's actually, it's just sort of, I read it somewhere, so I just, do that and it works perfectly. Now the next thing is, uh, is actually frequency deviation. In normal FM signal, the frequency deviation is somewhere around 75 kilohertz. 
frequency deviation will define what type of a modulation index or do I have an FM modulation, narrow band FM modulation or do I have a uh, narrow band modulation or wide band modulation. This is being decided by these parameters, frequency deviation and FM, uh, FM frequency. So I'm going to leave this right now to be 20 kilohertz. All right, I'm just going to leave this right now. I'm going to change, sorry, I'm going to change. I'm going to leave my frequency, modulating frequency with 10 kilohertz and I'm going to leave my frequency deviation to be 10 kilohertz. So I'm going to go to my mod, I'm going to go to FM, I'm going to leave my, I'm going to change my frequency um, deviation to be 10 kilohertz, just like the same thing as my FM frequency. So now the thing is this. Now just simply hit output and I'll be able to, once I have everything intact and this is the type of signal you can see an FM modulated signal. Uh, let me just do it like this. As you can see, uh, let's look at a, a single. Here we go. So sometimes we have frequencies which are closer, sometimes we have uh, so as you can see the frequency is going like this, like this, like this, if you want to look at it closely. As you can see, you can see a change in frequency. So like if you were to look at it here, it's much wider than these frequencies are much closer and things like that. Uh, but you won't be able to visualize this uh, until you look at in the spectrum of this. So in order for me to look at the spectrum of this, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my math function and once I go to my math function, I'm going to go to FFT. I'm going to shrink the amplitude down for this guy. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. I'm going to move this up here and I'm going to play with my resolution factor. All right, here we go. Now, when I look at this, this is what I'm seeing, guys. All right? This is what I'm seeing. Now, as you can see, in frequency modulation, frequency is continuously changing. So if, if you don't believe me, you can look at the top signal. You can see the change in frequency, frequency is changing, and, and so on. Now, if you were to look at your spectrum, let's quickly bring our marker in. Once I bring my marker in, let's leave the cursor one to be steady, and let's just move this. So what was actually my actual signal? My actual carrier signal was 100 kilohertz and my modulating signal was 10 kilohertz. So let's go here. Uh, so this, if you were to look at it, the first part, this, this guy, this is 100 kilohertz. So that's good. Now, if you know the theory of FM, the next would be what? FC plus FM. So let me just move my marker. So this should be 120, 110 kilohertz. Why? Because my modulating frequency was 100, uh, 10 kilohertz and my signal, uh, carrier signal was 100, so 110 kilohertz. Now, if you were to move down to this peak, this would be FC plus 2 FM. So 2 times FM is 10, 20 kilohertz, so 100 plus 20, it sh I should get 120 kilohertz. So let's look at it, let's look at it and boom. Indeed, it is 120 kilohertz. What would be the third one? The third one should be what? FC plus 3 FM. So FM was 10. So 10 plus 10 times 3 is 30. 100 plus 30 kilohertz should be 130 kilohertz. Let's just move my marker here. This is, you can hardly see this. This is the guy. This, so we're going to put a marker here on top of him. And indeed it is 130 kilohertz. If you can clearly see this. Now, where does all of this coming from? Now, there is a ratio that you need to remember. The ratio is this, modulating frequency, so FM modulation index, modulation index for FM is defined by, I think is defined by modulating frequency over, modulating frequency over, uh, uh, over uh, your frequency deviation, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just close, just look at it. To the frequency. So modulation index is defined by frequency deviation divided by your modulating frequency. This is what the definition is. 
All right, this is what the definition is. Your modulation index or FM is frequency deviation divided by FM. Now let's look at it. What is my frequency deviation that I have set on my function generator? So let me just quickly look at it. Now, if you were to look at these two values, these two values, one is 10 kilohertz, one is 10 kilohertz. So if I were to just plug in 10 kilohertz here, so this is 10 kilohertz, this is 10 kilohertz. So I should get one, isn't it? I should get one. As per math says, if my frequency deviation is 10 and my modulating frequency is 10, I should get 1. And what do I see here? So let me just go back to my oscilloscope here quickly. Now let's look at it. There's a thing called a Bessel function. Now in Bessel function, you have to look at your modulation index and based on your modulation index, you will find how many of these side bands are going to be produced. So if I were to look at it, one, ignoring the first one, how many are there? So how many set of sidebands you will see? One, two, three. So if you were to look at it, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is my carrier signal, and this is on the left side. This is on two FC minus FM, FC minus two FM, and FC minus three FM. So how many set of sidebands I will generate? I will get one, which is going to be your FC, which is given by this. If you have a modulation index to be one, so this is just ignore this. So the first one, first sideband is going to be FC plus FM, which is this FC minus FM. So it's a pair of these two, FC plus two FM, FC uh, minus two FM, FC plus three FM, FC minus three FM. This is how you're going to generate your uh, sidebands. This is how sidebands are generated based on this ratio. Now, let me just quickly change the frequency deviation. So our formula is this. Let me change this to 2, all right? Instead of frequency deviation to be 10 kilohertz, let me change this to 20 kilohertz. Let's see what happens. So my, when my frequency deviation is 20 kilohertz, so let me just simply go here, uh, 20 kilohertz. Now, as you can see, the number of set of sidebands are drastically increased. Now, if I were to move my marker, where's my center point, guys? So this is still my center, which is my carrier signal. And, and so I have one set of sideband, which includes left and right one, it's two, three, four. Four are visible. And let's look at our table. Mathematically, how many set of sideband I should see at two? So I should see one, two, at two. Now let's look at it. So at two, how many set of sideband I should see? One, two, three, four. Indeed, I am seeing one, two, three, four. Four set of sidebands. So our maths and our practical is check. I mean, it's it's actually working out quite nicely. I can see all of this uh, working out quite nicely uh, because I am seeing my carrier signal, which is right here. All right. And based on my carrier signal, I'm supposed to get one, two, three, and four set of sideband, which includes left and right sidebands. Uh, so that's freaking amazing. Uh, then, uh, then, then you can play around with this, and and you can see uh, what kind of modulation you can produce. So, any modulation, any modulation that is less than one. All right. When you have the ratio between your frequency deviation and your modulating frequency to be less than one you have narrow band FM. Anything that is above one, you will have wide band FM. So you need to remember this. If you have a modulation index, which is one and less than one, that is narrow band modulation. Anything above one are called wide band modulation. So uh, I hope you like this beautiful tutorial uh, on FM, how you generate FM, what is the story behind FM, what is Bessel function and all of that. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.